Hi, this is Andrew for Geek News Central, and this morning we're going to be looking at Roku's streaming products. They currently have three devices in the lineup. We've got the Roku Express, the Roku Premier, and then the Roku Streaming Stick Plus. These two are either new or newly refreshed in the product lineup. Um, they really were announced about a month ago now, and the Express is a refresh of the, an existing product which came out in 2017. The Premier is new into the lineup, and the Roku Streaming Stick Plus is effectively unchanged from, um, from, it, from when it was originally released back in, I think it was 2017. So those are the three elements in the, the lineup. We'll talk about the Roku Streaming Stick Plus in kind of in passing. The, I do have an unboxing uh, and video already on YouTube for that. So if you're interested in that particular device, take a look at that. Um, I'll really be focusing on these two in this review. It's simple to think of this as kind of, if you like, um, bottom, middle, high in terms of the product set. Um, and, that, and that's matched by their pricing. So the Express is 29.99, that's uh, GB pounds. Uh, the Premier is 39.99, and then the Streaming Stick Plus is 49. 99. So all competitively priced. Um, in terms of features, I mean the Roku OS is broadly the same across all of them and we'll see that later on in the in the video. Uh, and really the difference here is the support for the different kinds of TVs. So the Roku Express really supports up to HD TVs. You can kind of, so, so you can see the kind of logo up there. The Roku Premier does uh, HD, 4K and HDR as does the Roku Streaming Stick Plus. The new Streaming Stick Plus has slightly different packaging, but it's still gray and it still has the stick in the middle. Um, but where the Roku Streaming Stick Plus would be the one of choice would be if you have your TV, say, wall-mounted and you want to have that, that nice, neat look and you don't have wires sticking out the front or any other obstructions, the Streaming Stick Plus will slot into the HDMI port on the back of the TV and you have a fully, if you like, an, a radio frequency wireless um, a remote control. So you don't need line of sight. Both these two devices need line of sight. So you'll always have to have the, the little streaming unit visible at the side of the TV so that the remote control can see it. So if you do have a high-end TV, you're wanting that neat look, then the Streaming Stick Plus really is the one of choice. If you have a either, I mean, if you do have a high-end TV, but you have, if you like, if you like our house, um, you've got all kinds of cables and stuff already hanging out of it for games consoles and things like that, then the Roku Premier is probably the one to go for. And if you just have a standard HD TV, perhaps in a kitchen or in a second room, family prayer room, then the HD one will do just fine. Um, again, do need line of sight, but you know, it's straightforward enough. Okay, well, look, what we'll do now is we'll get these unboxed. You can have a look at the different units and uh, and then we'll get one of them set up on the TV. So I'm going to get rid of this because we're not going to be reviewing it. As I said, there already is a, an unboxing video for this product on YouTube under GNC Andrew. So take a look. So let's get inside. Mind your fingers, children. There we go. There's another, oh, there's, a, there's another sticker on the bottom. There we go, hopefully we'll get in this time. Hopefully, he says. There we go. Okay, so here's the uh, Roku Express. We've got the remote control, we've got the Roku streaming unit itself, and we've got some batteries. Um, I was, I'm always, I always think Roku is great in that it includes the batteries because it just means you can get up and go without having to, to worry about uh, finding batteries from 
the drawer upstairs or stealing them from your children's toys, which is never a good thing. So I'll we'll just put these into the remote control. Russell, Russell, Russell. Okay. Just make sure you get them in the right way around. Hope I have done that one. I think I have. That's it. Take, take the wrap off. So that's that. Good to go. So this is a, it's a fairly standard remote. You've got your kind of like your home button, a back button, a bit of directional cursoring. Um, if this is a, like a, the stars, usually a, like a settings button. Um, that's usually a go bit kind of like a return star button. Play, pause, forward, backwards. And then you've got a couple of uh, dedicated buttons here. Uh, Netflix, Google Play, Spotify, and Rautkin TV, or Rakuten TV. Um, I, I use three of those four. So uh, it'll be handy enough uh, once we get set up. You can kick those off quickly. So this is the new shaped um, Roku Express. It's more, it's, a, it's got a, a softer line to it. It's uh, curved on top, whereas the, the previous one was kind of more like the, the rectangular one. Um, the sticker here is really just showing you which way around you've got to have the, the unit, which is helpful. Uh, so let's just point the remote control here. So let's just take that off as well. So I think that, I mean, it's pretty unobtrusive, uh, kind of soft, as I say, much softer edges. Around the back, we've got the um, HDMI socket. So there'll be a cable for that. I think that's in the box. Uh, we've got a, um, got the US, sorry, micro USB for charging, for power. And then we've got a reset pin that, frankly, I mean, I've had, I've had, uh, Roku's for years and years and years. Oh, I don't think I've ever had to do a, a hard reset on the device. Let's put this up here so we know what we're talking about. So that's the Roku Express. Um, it's also been a very long time since Roku's had any USB ports or micro SD um, slots. So if you are wanting to stream your own personal media, media rather than from Netflix, you'll have to re rely on, a, if you like, a NAS or a, a Plex server or something like that. Handley, Roku have provided a kind of, whoops, I've just gone and dropped it, kind of like a sticky thing. So you unpeel this, that provides stickiness, and then you can uh, stick this either onto the surface of the desk or perhaps more usefully onto the side of the TV if you've got a, a big enough bezel or anything like that. Roku are always quite good in that they all supply um, all the relevant cables, so in particular the, the HDMI cable. Um, now the HDMI cable, to be fair, can be a bit short. Um, I mean, let's see, I can probably hold it across the camera. So as you can say, it's not very long. In most circumstances, you'll probably be all right. Um, but I always think it could just do with it being a bit longer. But then you probably get to the situation where uh, you have all the extra cable lying around. You've got a um, USB to micro USB connector as well. Um, and obviously that's going to go in the, in the back there. And um, they don't provide, they don't actually provide a USB charger in, or USB power supply in this. Everyone's got them lying around. The power demands aren't significantly high. And quite often you'll find that your TV actually has a spare USB port, which is capable of powering the Roku Express as well. So no point creating extra plastic and extra electronic waste. So I'm happy enough with Roku not providing it um, at this price point. Okay, so look, that's the that's pretty much everything there is with the Roku Express. Let me just undo some of these cables and just show you how it's all going to work. It's, it's nice, well, I mean, there's a nice touch here that they have one of the uh, little kind of <laughs> it's making it hard for me to unwrap, but they have a um, cable tie, so you can keep your 
cables all nice and neat once you've got it set up. So let's move that out of the way a second. So we've got our Roku, our Roku Express. I'm going to plug that in the back here, just make sure, as ever. I'm, ho I'm looking forward to the time when people start moving to USB-C, because then you don't have to keep looking to see which way up you've got the cable. And then that's going to connect around into the TV. So I'll stick that on the bottom, or at least we'll pretend to stick that on the bottom anyway. Well, no, we're not bother. Okay, you get the idea. So really that's your, your um, Roku Express. You've got your remote control with batteries. You've got the Roku Express unit itself. And then you have got the relevant cables for connecting to the TV and connecting to the power. But as I said, you will need to provide your own uh, USB power supply uh, in order to keep it up and running. Okay, so look, that's the that's the US that's the Roku Express. Um, let's take a quick look then at the Roku Premier. Okay, so the main difference between the Roku Premier and the Roku Express is that the Roku Express, the other one, only supports HD. The Roku Premier supports the 4K and the HDR. It is a little bit more expensive at uh, 39.99, uh, so it would be it would be the one to say it would be the one to buy if you do have that higher end TV. So let's have a quick look. Get the stickers off it again this time. Some of you might be wondering what actually is HDR. HDR is, uh, I should just, I should, I should be able to do two things at once here. Um, HDR is high dynamic range. And what that really means is that, or what that, is that the TV tries to present um, blacks as black as it can and uh, without, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry, I'm back with you. I had a bit of a, a bit of a coughing fit there. So I was trying to explain to you what uh, HDR uh, is. So HDR stands for uh, high dynamic range and high dynamic range tries to improve the, I guess the display or highlights the difference between the, the whitest parts of the screen and the darkest parts of the screen. So it's your, your whitest whites and your, and your blackest blacks as it were. And it does this because, I mean, I'm sure some of you have watched TV pro or seen programs where, um, you know, the picture is so black that you actually can hardly see what's, what's going on, um, which can be a bit dis disconcerting at, at times. Um, okay, so here we've got the Roku Premier. Um, and I'll just put that to the one side in a second. As before, we've got the, the unit itself and the remote control. Uh, here's the, the little room unit. And really, as I say, much as before with the uh, Express, we've got the uh, slightly more rectangular style. We've got the USB, not, sorry, the micro USB charging port around the, port, around the back. And that we've got the HDMI port as well. And we've got the the sticker which allows us to stick the unit to somewhere suitable for our TV. Um, again, it is this is a line of sight device that uses IR from the remote control, um, so you can't stick this around the back of the TV um, unless you start pointing the remote control at the sky. Again, we get the batteries. I will put get them installed so we're good to go. Now I like quite a few devices the, the batteries to go the same way in the in the remote. You know normally you get them kind of head to toe, but on the, the Roku they both go the same way. 
I'm going to take this protecting cover off and tap the sauce all ready to there. And we do have the same buttons. We've got Netflix, Google Play and Spotify and a Rakuten TV on the fourth one. Also in the box, as before, we do have our HDMI cable and we have our USB to micro USB power cable. Um, but unlike the, uh, unlike the Express, the Premier does come with a USB Roku charger or power, not charger, power supply, I guess they are. Now, I don't know whether this is essential or whether you get away with the, um, the USB port that's often on your TV. Um, if I can read a bit closer, this will, well, this will only, yes, this will supply up to about an amp. So I assume that if your TV can, can supply up to an amp in current, then you, you won't need this. If it won't supply that, that full amp, then you'll, you will need to use this. Okay, so that really comes, that's the end of the, if you like, the unboxing part of it. What, we'll, what I'll do now is that I will get this set up. I'll probably use the Premier um, connected up to the TV so that you can, and we'll, we'll, we'll get it set up. The, the, the setup will be the same for both devices, so there's no value in showing you both doing the same thing. Um, so we'll get set up with the Roku Premier and uh, show you how to get the unit onto your, onto your Wi-Fi and then uh, see what programs or channels, apps, are available on the system. Okay, back soon. Okay, just a quick interlude. Um, I've got the Roku Premiere set up now, it's connected to the TV. I was going through some of the getting started guides, and things like that, and Roku now nicely provide you with a couple of promotional stickers in the box. You've got Roku and I love Roku. Uh, nice little touch that. Right, we're back looking at the TV screen next. Hi, and we're back with our review of the Roku Express and the Roku Premier, Roku's latest devices. We're just going through the setup procedure for the Roku, so let's get started with some English. It's going to look for the wireless networks, so hopefully it'll pick up the ones that are in the house. Yep, now um, let me just check here. Um, so looking at those, it is just picking up BG. N Wi-Fi networks. It's not picking up. I have a, an 11AC network in here as well. It's not picking that up. So um, I don't have any particular issues with it. It's just interesting to note um, that you do have to have uh, a legacy Wi-Fi network. It's probably not going to be an issue for most people. So let's choose that one. Now I'm going to have to put in my password, my Wi-Fi password for the SSID. Um, it, it can be a bit footery. You have to use the, the remote's directional controls. So like this to move around the place. It is, as I say, it is a little bit footery. You only have to do it once. So once you've got it put in, um, that's it, until um, you either move house and or get a new uh, Wi-Fi network. So um, I'm not going to tell you my password, so um, we'll be back in a minute once I've entered it. Okay, so I've put in my password and it's now doing a couple of checks. It's looking for the wireless, it's looking for the internet. All good to go. Now at this point, oh, what's it checking now? Okay, so it has done a little check and it wants to do a quick, uh, effectively a quick OS update. So uh, talk amongst yourselves at this point. I'll, I'll pause the video and we'll come back once it's done. Okay, so the Roku has restarted after doing the OS update. It took about three minutes and um, it's now wanting to see what the TV type is like. So we'll let it do that. So it seems to have correctly detected my TV. I regrettably don't have a 4K TV. Maybe Christmas. Yep, screen looks good. Now, instead of having to use the robot control, uh, Roku does does provide a relatively easy way of uh, getting 
the device paired up. So what you do is you go to their website. So it's going to be www.roku.com forward slash link. I'm just typing away here. And you'll be asked to sign in if you already have an account. If not, <coughs> excuse me. If not, you can create an account. The creating account is very straightforward. It's not a, it's just the usual username and password. Um, there's three steps to it, if I recall, and the third step does ask you to put in a, a credit card details. I think I discovered that if you actually just don't do this bit, it still sets up your account, but you don't have to put in your credit card details. Um, I don't think I've ever bought anything off the Roku's website. Um, nothing comes to mind, but there are some apps which cost money. So I'm going to put in the, it's got to the bit, oh, sorry, I'm going to just show you on the screen here. So uh, hopefully that gets some kind of focus. So it's just going to ask for the link code up here. So I'm going to type that in. Now the link code is obviously always different. So make sure you use the one that's presented on your screen. Okay, so there was a slight delay there because I had to recapture and prove that I wasn't a robot. But uh, now it should be ready to go. I'm just waiting for it to, here it goes. So it knows that I'm an existing Roku user and that I've selected various channels or apps or whatever you want to call them. And it's now going to add those into the system. has some entertaining uh, <laughs> descriptions. So look, I will let it run away and oh, we can hear it's, uh, it's uh, adding in particular apps. You can see adding in Netflix. Okay, so the Roku Premiere has loaded up all my channels. Now, as you notice at the bottom, it also talks about the Roku mobile app. We'll talk about that in a second. It's a nice little app that actually allows you to do quite a lot, not just use it as, use your phone as a kind of remote control, but you can actually add the stuff to your channel, things like that. So let's keep going here. So this is the screen that you'd be familiar to everyone who's had uh, a Roku. You've effectively got your home screen, which has all your channels on the uh, right, right hand side. You then have a thing called a feed, which shows you stuff that you're kind of interested in. You can search for things, um, actors, films, all those kinds of things. Streaming channels, that's where you can add new content to your, if you like, your home screen. And then you've got your settings. And we'll have a look at those in turn. So using control, you can go over and pick whatever it is you're interested in. Um, yeah, so you can see the, there's BBC's iPlayer, one of the, the big, the big uh, terrestrial broadcasters. Down below, we've got My5 for Channel 5. We've got four over here. And it's, it's very easy to rearrange these, you know, if you want. Uh, your, your, uh, you say the BBC iPlayer to be the first one. You basically press the the star button here on the remote, and there's an option to move the channel. And once you've done that, you can then basically move it around the place to where you want. So let's say stick that at the top, and maybe we want ITV Hub, which is the other, well, one of the other terrestrial broadcasters here in the UK, you want it up next to it. So that's it. So you can basically rearrange rearrange your uh, um, your home screen to suit your, your personal preferences. I think I mentioned this in the some of the unboxing. Um, if you can use various NAS solutions to play your media. So if I go in here, um, we could kind of go on to, I have a local NAS on the system, which allows you to look at photos and videos and music that I have stored there. So if we go into the audio section, uh, that's the media server. And it has uh, my music all stored in there, all by album, by artist, by tracks and all this kind of stuff. So um, if you if you have a lot of media all scrolled away as MP3s, um, you can certainly play those. Um, let's see what if we, it's gonna take a moment just to trundle through all the content I have. Yeah, so um, you got 
various, if I've got album art, it'll show that some of these things are, are not quite too sure what they are. But oh, it was some podcast. There's our ha. Um, oh, Merry Christmas. I'll need that soon. All those kinds of things. And there's Moby. I think it is over there. So, so you get the idea. Um, it's the easiest way to play, play media that you might have. And you can do photos and things as well for that. So let's just go back to the home screen. Clicking on any of these, um, any of these channels, um, I'm quite impressed with that actually. Um, on previous ones, you would have seen a lot of loading come up, and uh, it wouldn't have been as uh, instantaneous as as that was. So very impressed there actually. I was expecting to have to explain how the device caches the channels, um, so that it. It, and it kind of shuffles them around, so frequently used stuff gets top in the top billing. Uh, lesser used stuff goes, um, you know, needs to be reloaded when you choose it. Um, oh, this this kind of stuff really annoys me. In the, in the good old days, you used to be able to turn on the TV and watch TV. Now you constantly have to be uh, you now need to see. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, let's choose one that maybe you don't have to sign in. Okay, so I've spent a bit of time there logging into all the different systems. So just to have a quick look through some of them. So if we go into the BBC's iPlayer, we can relatively quickly get to see the channels and things. There we go, BBC iPlayer. I'm going to log in with my account. And then you get to see all the, the products that are currently available. What's the products? All the channels and programs that are currently available, and you can just basically click through them all. It's all pretty straightforward. Not any different for, say, ITV. Goes in, presents you with the programs which are currently available, and as I say, you can just click around looking for whatever it is you want. Netflix, same kind of thing. Go in and see who everyone is who has accounts and then what you want to watch and things like that so it's a very simple interface very straightforward and uh, as I say it's just a case of squirting around the place I didn't just set that one up let's have a look at BBC News and you'll get to see what's on the, the news channel Okay, so that's basically the home screen. You've got all your channels, and pretty much everything you'd expect is there. Um, you've got uh, Amazon Prime Video, you've got uh, Netflix, you've got YouTube, you've got Google Play. Um, they're pretty much all there. And the good news is, I heard that the uh, the Disney Plus service is coming to to the Roku, which will be pretty good. Your feed allows you to kind of see what's um, available. It kind of collates everything into one place, if you get the idea. So you can scroll through and find stuff. And then um, if you go into it, it'll, uh, it'll show you which services can offer you this particular film. So in this instance, Bohemian Rhapsody, it's available through Now TV, through Prime Video for to buy, um, also Apple TV and uh, um, <clears throat> Excuse me, and uh, and that's where you can get that movie if you're after it. So it's kind of handy if you're looking for something, and rather than having to potentially go through a million or through you know through you know let's say you've got Prime and you've got uh, a Netflix and all this kind of stuff, you can actually just go through there. You do TV shows, movies coming soon, uh, things like that. Search again allows you to look for something, so um, you can do movies, TVs, act, TV programs, actors. So let's say you're a fan of. Harry Grant. Um, Carrie Grant, so there's, there's some stuff about Carrie Grant as well. And you can, um, oops, you can actually see these ones here. These are actually the films that he's in, not just, uh, um, not just programs that have Carrie Grant in his title. So Notorious, that's a great film. But I, I mean, uh, there's some of those are really good. Okay, and um, it's kind of handy. So the streaming channels, that's where you can look and see what channels are of interest to you. It has 
um, a number of different breakdowns. Uh, so you can see featured ones, they typically ones that uh, are of interest at the moment. Um, you can kind of see on some of those ones there's a little circle with a tick. They're ones that I already have loaded, so you don't need to reload those. Um, you've got just added, so these will be new ones that have just been added to the portfolio of, of channels on the Roku. And again, you can just slick through any of those. And any of those that take your fancy, um, you can uh, you just simply select them and add them in. It's very, it's very straightforward. Look, I'll do that for what's that? one that's even mm. Happy Halloween. So, so that will actually, as you can see there, actually requires an extra, an extra payment. But uh, let's see. Um, there's one that's free. So you just go into it and you add the channel if you want it added to your roster. Very straightforward. Popular, most popular shows you ones, well, the ones that are the most popular. Um, as you can see, I've got quite a lot of these already loaded. There's Plex if you are wanting to use a, an alternative media streamer. Um, so you can kind of see what's popular. It's worth popping in here just to see if there's something you've missed that you weren't really familiar with. Uh, like I have no idea, what's Envy? Oh, again, it looks like some kind of media streamer, is it? Yes, so it's a, it's a personal media streamer of some kind. And then you can obviously search for a channel. And then you've got various genres of film, TV, games. So you can play some games on it. Um, some of the early Roku's actually had a, a controller which had extra buttons on it for playing games. I don't think they do that anymore. You've got some kind of apps as well. I think I pretty much, um, you know, there's, oh, there's Firefox is here now. There's one I did not know. Watch videos pushed from Firefox for Androids on your Roku. I did not know that was there. Uh, but you can do casting. So there's two of these ones. Are, uh, there's all screen receiver, which you can use for casting. And then finally, we've got our settings. So there's various bits and pieces you can check out in here, like your network, you know, if you need to pair a new remote, things like that. Um, you can, oops, sorry, move across. You can theme this, so you can browse various themes and things like that. Um, at the moment, I think they've actually got a, a uh, I think, yeah, I think the Halloween theme is, uh, well, let's load that up. As it, today is actually Halloween that I'm recording this. So there you go. So now we have a Halloween theme with pumpkins. But there's loads of different themes and you can download them and, and choose ones. I think there's Marilyn Monroe one, the Star Trek ones, there's all kinds of different themes. There's a wintry one, um, Midnight Magic. Mm, it's quite I like that. Um, I shall add that as a channel. Most themes, if not all themes, are free. Or at least the themes developed by Roku, I think, are free. Um, and there's so, as I say, so there's lots of different settings. You can have your screensaver. Um, they're, they're so, so, Roku have quite a good uh, screensaver that uh, shows you various, uh, they call it the city stroll, which uh, shows you, uh, um, it's kind of like a landscape with uh, buildings and things and features from different films. It's quite fun trying to pick out which film the, the set comes from. I don't know if I can do it, can I? Preview. So look. Yeah, so there you go. So you can kind of see um, aliens, you know, that's the London Eye, there's things from Volcano, you've also got robots going mad, there's Spider Man going around. There's the over, just over there, there's a little Spider Man. Um, Trying to think where else you can see at the moment. Um, oh, you've also got the is that's kind of presumably that's the snaps from the Wizard of Oz and look there's uh, the Daily Planet and there's the Avengers Tower so it's quite good fun trying to pick pick out all the, the different programs okay well look that wraps up really for the Roku interface and the uh, if you like the setup of the Roku Premiere it's all pretty straightforward and um, I say the only the only annoying bits are when you now have to sign into all those apps. So we'll just have a quick wrap up in a second and I'll also show you the Roku app. Okay and we're back we've seen the setup of the Roku Premiere and um, just wanted to show you the Roku app. So the Roku app's a little complimentary product that Roku offer that allow you to do the you know if you like the simple things like 
you can actually make the, the your phone mimic the uh, the Roku remote control, which is interesting enough, but it's not it's not really that special. Um, what you can also do is you can get it to cast. You can actually cast music, photos, and videos from your device to your Roku, which can be quite handy if you've just taken a whole load of pictures on your phone and you want to to show everyone what it is that you've been up to. And then you can also manage your channels and your uh, channel store. So you can use the, the phone here to, you know, to add new channels and things like that. Oh, I need to sign into my Roku account, but uh, but you get the idea on what you can do. So it's a nice little add-on and it's uh, definitely a, a bonus feature as it were for the Roku. So that really brings us to end and we've, uh, I'm just gonna move the camera slightly. This is probably gonna jerk terribly, there we go. So we've seen the, the new, two new Rokus in their lineup with the Roku Express, the Roku Premier. We've got the kind of soft lozenge shape for the Roku Express and the more rectangular Roku Premier. As said before, the main difference is that you've just got HD on the Express, whereas the Premier has HD, 4K and HDR. And let's not forget the, the Streaming Stick Plus, which remains in the product lineup. So you can buy the Rokus from all good retailers, as they say. The pricing is says £29.99 there, uh, £39 there, and I think it's 49 if I remember over there, yep, for the for the, the streaming stick plus. I think that's it. So we'll not we'll just wrap it at that point. This is Andrew for Geek News Central with the Roku Express and the Roku Premiere. Thanks very much. <laughs>